We close our fists, but we ain't close our eyes yet. Mama taught me to be colorblind. And still I can see that racism is your mindset. I come to find that we projects, process in the ghetto of the projects. And still manage to raise number one prospects. Raging against the machines or the system. Because we was built for progress. Ah, uh, yes. We still Malcolm by any means or Martin Luther with a dream. In line backing our brothers and sisters for reparations. But you can't get a quarterback. So it seems that they touch down on your insecurities. But won't touch up on the safety issues in the community. How can you want unity? And y'all keep intercepting our dreams. America, America. That's danger, danger. You protest and they see strangers. We led in love. Never in anger. The last time a black man led you the wrong way, it was to protect the sinner's chamber. They say love thy neighbor. All men are created equal. We should all want peace. I don't care if you white as the white on Snow White's teeth or black as the J's on MJ's feet. There's people dying for their belief, shot dead in the street. And they want you to think that black on black is the rivalry every time y'all meet. But still and yet, I want you to see that you more than an athlete. You could be Michelle Obama or Barack if you ask me. That's all facts, no lie. You could be the vice president like Miss Harris. How would you know if you don't try? You could be a poet named Holler, speaking on behalf of Michael Kaiser. Ooh, that's so far, because we was built for progress. Hey, it's Michael Kaiser here with the LA Rams from SoFi Stadium, celebrating Black History Month, and we're built for progress. When I think of Black History Month, I, I think of, you know, the people that came before that put me in the position I'm in today. I'm a family guy, so I, I've related back to my own family. I think of my great-grandfather working on, you know, working on the railroad for 30 years, not missing a day, nothing but hard work. And then I see my own father, you know, the first black man in his family to go to college, a historically black college, and then, you know, him putting in the work, and then me going to the University of Virginia football scholarship, you know, being there, being in the NFL. And that's, that's what black history is all about to me. It's just, you know, those that came before put in hard work, being persecuted, kind of the saying I grew up with was just being a Kaiser, and that meant a lot. You know, my dad, when he dropped me off at school, you know, a lot of people, when their parents drop me off at school, oh, I love you, hugs, kisses, my dad. I remember, it. I'll never forget, he dropped me off, dapped me up, said you a Kaiser, remember that, and that's all I needed, you know what I'm saying, and it's just, everything I do, everything we do is, you a Kaiser, your name's on it, you know, be proud of what you do, and respect what you do. Football is the most diverse that I think of, of all the sports sports that you can play because it really is a sport that is intertwined in small pockets of the country all throughout. When I played at UVA, I played with rural white guys, I played with city black guys from, from Richmond. All were united around one goal, and that was being the best football players that we could be, being the best football team that we could be. You know, when you're running wind sprints at 6.30 in the morning, you don't, you don't care about, you know, where that guy came from, what, how his family's different than yours. All you care about is, hey, we're in this together. If you don't get this, and we gotta do it again. So you have a sense of accountability for each other. It's one of those things you're, you're, you're kind of sad that, that that situation presented itself. But my thing was when I looked around in the room and I saw a lot of scared young men around me. At the time, Coach Mendenhall, he came from BYU. He's a Mormon coach, Mormon white coach who had brought a lot of his Mormon white coaching staff. The team at the time was made up of a lot of black players. You're not in that position to know how to handle a situation like that. No one is. No one's prepared for it. But I looked around the room and I just felt like there needed to be a leader and I wanted to be that guy. And that was on the field and off. When the time came for someone to step up, I was that guy. And I was ready for it because I had prepared my whole life to be a leader, to be the guy, to be the one chosen. And I, and I relished those, those moments. Communication, that's important. That's a pillar in the Rams organization. Um, coach McVay talks about all the time, communicating from player to coach, coach to player, and especially when it comes to social justice, I think that was a, a conversation that needed to be had, and it was a conversation that was had throughout the Rams organization. So whether that was being on Zoom calls with the president of the team, the head coach, just being able to have that conversation and that communication and feel like your voice was heard. I've always thought you have to learn from your history to learn where you want to go in the future. You know, in practice, you make a million mistakes. So when you get in the game, you get it right. But, you know, we 
so much just want to judge people on a finished product and we don't see the work that went in to how they got there or they made a couple mistakes in the past and it's like let's cancel that person let's write them off that don't make sense to me you know what i'm saying you need your history to inform you about all right we did it this way this is how we're going to correct it that sense of accountability and that sense of progress you learn from your history you take some pride in your history if it's wrong you say all right that was wrong but if it was right and yeah, you take pride in it as well and keep moving forward I think it's time the time is now if you with me for my line it's time i think it's time it's time if you with me